Hey, what's up, y'all? Today, we're gonna go hunting for ghost plants. Come along, I'll explain. Now, some of y'all may have been ghosted by somebody on social media, may have even been ghosted by a boyfriend or girlfriend. But in the pre-harvest scouting, we're looking for ghosted plants. That may be indication that we're gonna have harvest trouble. And what we're looking for is a plant that's just literally fading away. Almost like an old super villain snapped his fingers and it's just fading to dust. So let's let's see what we can find out here. Now here, here's what we're looking for. This is a good example. See, we've got a green leafy upper canopy. And we've got this one here. That's just faded pink looking. And the one two down as well. And you see how those two stick out in the canopy as they're fading away. So let's let's dig these up and see what's going on. As you can see, these guys went ahead and put on a pretty decent ear. And not awesome, not bad. They're producing corn, will be alright. The biggest concern with these ghosted plants is whether or not they'll withstand the fall storm and cause harvest problems. So for that, we're going to look down here at the root ball. As you can see, the stalks are, the crown's good and intact. Nice looking stalk inside until we get up to the node where the ear is and we split it open we start to find that rot where it's starting to sit in and haul this stalk out and that's the node below the ear up to the ear node and that's a bad deal because it'll fold over right there and that makes it hard to harvest if we can get it up at all so for a lot of the stock rots and crown rots that cause harvest trouble, yeah. the infection occurs early in the growing season in saturated soils. So what I expected to find out here most often would be fusarium because this field would have been planted on May 6th and was just coming up and getting established when on May 9th, we got a pounding cold, cold rain. And these young plants set in saturated cold soils for a few days. And when you got a young plant in cold soil, it doesn't grow. And when it doesn't grow, it can't defend itself. And it opens itself up to infection. And that infection can hide in the stalk and the crown all growing season and not show itself until we get late in the grain fill. And we've got uh, late season drought stress, we got heat stress, and grain fill all hammering this corn crop. And when all that stress hits the plant, then that's when the symptomologies of the infection can show up and we start to see trouble. As the pathogen restricts the movement of nutrients through the stock, we start to see stock cannibalization, the stock gets weak, the pathogen spreads, and it's just a vicious cycle until these plants ghost out and fall down. Here we've got another one. You see nice green canopy until you get to this one right here that's ghosted out. And two more down, that one there, Mr. Leaf, get out of my way. He's ghosted out too. So we'll see what's going on here. And again on this one, we don't see any damage to the lower stock. But as we move upward toward the ear, that's where we find the weak spot. And those nodes starting to atrophy and split apart. And the stock coming apart on us too. And uh, that's what we don't want to happen when these fall winds start to blow in. Does that stock break right below the ear? A different story. So that 
that was where the ear sat and the ear node. And a nice white, healthy stock. Come on, Mr. Camera, all the way down. Until we start to get to the lower end of the stock. A little bit of stock right there. And as we move down to the crown, then we find some real problems. So there's some crown rot sitting in. That's the first node. There's a crown. You remember those old, the other crowns we looked at, they were white and rounded. This one's brown and pointed. And we're starting to see the bottom node hollow out there. And this one will go over right, right at the ground and really create a harvest issue. Uh, but this is, this limitation of up to uptake here is what made that plant ghost out and a sign that we got stock trouble coming. So from a management standpoint, there's not a whole lot we can do except for prioritize your harvest fields. If you feel you've got a significant amount of plants that are at risk for lodging and we can get that field just a little faster. These pathogens live in crop residue and in the soil. They overwinter and they primarily attack the plant when it's under stress real early on in the growing season. So seed treatments certainly help, but again, seed treatments typically need an actively growing plant. And when these infections set in, the plant was waterlogged and wasn't growing. And that's, that's the window. Also rootworm feeding, if it's late enough in the season, or any damage to the the roots give that pathogen a, a place to get in the plant and start hanging out until late season stress allows it to flourish in the plant so you know natural genetic resistance uh, well drained fields uh, seed treatment all those things can help but none of them are bulletproof and if, if the weather works against you you just got to prioritize harvest and go get it so here's a little better look we got two ghosted plants and two healthy plants. All the same planting date, all the same hybrid, but as you can see, the late season stress ghosted this one and this one out. And they all should look like the green ones here and here. So as you're walking down through the field, imagine this is standing corn, you see green corn, green corn, green corn ghosted, green corn ghosted. And those ghosted ones have something going on in the stock, somewhere between the crown and the ear, that is strangling the plant off, limiting nutrition, limiting water uptake, and causing stress on that stock that sets you up for lodging and harvestability problems. So as we're out scouting and walking through, we're looking for how many of these ghosted plants we've got in the field to give us an indication of whether or not we need to move that field up in the harvest lineup. So here are the two plants that were side by side out in the field. And we can see on this healthy one, you know, the crown's got a little twisting from early season stress, uh, but the stock is thick, healthy, white, all the way up to the ear node. Everything looks great. This one right next to it, again, we can see that early season stress and the twisting, that, that should be round and bullet shaped, more like the shape of that knife instead of twisting and pointing. So there's the early season stress that stopped that growth pattern of the plant and allowed the pathogen to get in. Now, the bottom half of the stalk looks great. That's just dirt. That's not infection, that's just some dirt. This looks good all the way up until we get to the node below the ear. And that's when we find the infection right there at the node. You can see the pith there start to be hollowed out. And then what's really scary is the node where the ear shank attaches. So here's the ear and the shank attaches. This is the bottom of the shank. And look at that layer of rot right there below the shank. So if it doesn't snap and fold over right there, we run the risk of the bottom of the shank getting rotten and the ear falling off. And then, of course, it's not harvestable. As you can see, both plants have nice harvestable ears. But this one, if we lose, lose this note here and the ear falls off or it breaks over just below the ear there, then that, that we lose a harvestable ear. Here are two more plants that were side by side out in that same field. Again, both of them have nice harvestable ears. 
And as we split them open, the nice thick green one, you can see the nice shape of that crown. It's nice and round, it's thick. It's not pointed and twisty. It's got nice symmetry from here to here, right? This is probably the best crown we've looked at so far. No early season stress. This plant did very well. And we got a nice, thick, full stock. Nice and clean all the way up to the ear. No concerns. This one put on a harvestable ear. And the stock is really in pretty decent shape up top. But as we work back to the crown, the first thing you'll notice is that sharp pointed twisted crown. That's the indication of the early season stress as compared to this nice wide bullet shaped crown. We get this gnarly thing here. So this is the stress that allowed the pathogen in. And then look what it did to the first two nodes. See that stock is already hollowed out. It smells like silage. It's rotten. And when the wind blows, this is at risk of falling over right at the ground. And then we can't harvest it. Look, I can almost lay my thumb inside the center of that stock. So if this folds over at the ground, then we lose that harvestable ear. So these ghosted plants are what we're looking for. If we got enough of these out, now this one, the lignant's still pretty stiff. It may stand even though the stock is hollow because this outside is thick and healthy and doesn't collapse when I squeeze it. It's still pretty thick, so we, you can even have a hollow stock that still stands. But if the wind blows hard enough, without this white pith in the middle, it's going to snap over. We want that stock to stay full and pliable and stand through harvest. Again, this one here, that stock is so weak and brittle, it's just going to take a little bit of wind, and it's going over right below the ear. So in the field we walked today, these were just a couple plants out of the whole field. Not major spots where we've got standability concerns. We may lose a plant here or there, but it's not anything that we need to prioritize or make wholesale changes to. But there's some good examples and some good talking points to what you may see in your field doing some pre-harvest scouting. If there's enough plants and enough frequency of this occurrence, then we take a look at our residue management, take a look at drainage, seed treatments, anything we can do to help lessen these pathogens from getting in and causing crown rot and stock rot. And even in the short term, may have to reprioritize harvest to a point that uh, we change which fields we're going to next to get these ghosted plants before they go over. So in this scenario, it's not huge, no call for wholesale changes, something to be aware of, good teaching examples but certainly worth walking through your fields to see if there are circumstances where there are enough ghosted plants together. We may wanna get out there a little quicker than we planned on, or we may, may wanna make some changes next time that field comes back to corn. So uh, just some good examples, something to think about. Good luck this fall.